What's up America? Neil here from Jago Firearms Academy. Today we're going to be doing a review on an extremely popular pistol, the Smith & Wesson m 9 Stay tuned. Alright, so it comes in a nice plastic box here for you. It says Smith & Wesson on it. Let's go ahead and uh, take a look and see what's inside. Again, I'm not a big uh, product reviewer for products I have never used before. I am in fact a certified Smith & Wesson armor for the m and line, so I know this gun extremely well. Uh, this is not actually my firearm. I borrowed this for this review. So let's take a look what we have inside here. All right, so here we go. Uh, this is the pistol itself. Now it does come with two magazines, just so you guys know. The other one has rounds in it. I didn't want to take them out just for this particular video. But of course, we're going to do a quick safety check on this particular firearm. And uh, the chamber is clear, and there is no magazine and no rounds. So, let's get down to business. Okay, so again, we have the pistol, we have two mags, and we have three back straps. And the way the pistols come from the factory, they come with the medium back strap, which I'll show you how that actually works in just a moment. But uh, Smith & Wesson says that 95% of all hand sizes uh, can be, be comfortably fit with these three back straps. Uh, this is the small size, and it actually says small right in there. I don't know whether the camera will pick that up or not, but it is very easy to see. And then, of course, there's the medium, and the individual who uses this now has the extra large on there. Okay, So we'll show you how to take that out in just a moment. Let's take a closer look at this firearm itself. So some of the features right off the bat that I always look for in a firearm uh, from the factory is that it has steel sights, steel sights. There's uh, another manufacturer, which I will not name, that doesn't come with steel sights. is one of the drawbacks for me. But steel sights are very important, especially ones with a really nice pronounced edge like the Smith & Wesson has. And this is ideal if you have to do one-hand manipulations where you're actually using the slide itself, the rear sight here, to uh, cycle the slide. So these are very durable, uh, highly adjustable, both front and rear, and very good quality. One of the other things that the Smith & Wesson did an excellent job on is you notice this really pronounced beaver tail back here. This allows you to get really high on the firearm itself while staying safe and below that uh, bore axis. But the closer we can get, the higher up we can get to this bore axis, the more control we're going to have on this firearm. And so they did an excellent job um, in the design of this particular pistol. As we move to the front here, you'll notice it does have a, a rail here. So you can mount any type of lights or lasers that uh, you feel you need. Uh, you can go ahead and put those on. It has ambidextrous slide release on both sides, which is very convenient if you're a left-hander. The other nice thing is although the magazine release itself is set up here for a right-hander, it can easily be switched simply by moving a little, little beam in there and taking this out, pushing it on the other side, and then you can switch it completely over to the left side, allowing you to have the slide lock slide release and the magazine release for a left-handed shooter which is a huge advantage if you are in fact a left-handed shooter. The finish itself is uh, called Melanite. It is a very heavy-duty surface. Uh, it does stand up very well to scratches and drops and it's very durable. Uh, so let's take a look how this gun actually comes apart. So right up front here you have your takedown lever. Now if you actually read your manual, uh, one of the things that M&P, Smith & Wesson uh, and the M&P pistol suggest you do is actually to take this apart without having to pull the trigger. Now, uh, I typically do not do that, but that is the recommended uh, way to do that. And let's show you how that actually happens. On the bottom of the pistol, right at the very base of the grip here, there's a little uh, tool which you turn. Okay, so where the camera picks that up. But all you do is turn that, and then you're able to actually pull this out. Now this does two things. One, it gives you a tool that you can literally use in conjunction with the, the small hammer to disassemble this entire gun. Uh, but also it allows you access to remove the actual grip panels here. So the nice thing about these grip panels, as I said earlier, there's three of them, and they can be changed out quickly uh, just to see if that's the right grip for you and you can swap them out until you find the right one. And then again, reinserting this and turning it is all you need to do. But to take this down the way Smith & Wesson uh, would like you to do, there's going to be a little lever in here. In just a second, I'm going to get a flashlight, and I will show you where this is. Okay, so as you see, there's that little yellow bar that's uh, pointed upward right now. What I'm going to do is take that metal tool and push it down. I'm going to try this on camera, but without the light, I don't think it's going to happen. 
but uh, you'll see the difference here in just a second. All right, and there you can see that yellow bar right there that's actually depressed downward. So uh, now we can remove the slide without actually pulling the trigger. And just in case it was a little confusing with the camera, that, uh, that bar is right down here. So now that we've done that, we can go ahead and take our takedown bar and press it downward. So it'll be downward like that. Now, since we have that bar down there, we do not need to pull the trigger. All we need to do is let that slide go forward, and off it comes. So now that we have this uh, apart, it's going to break down in the same four components most modern pistols do, which is your frame, spring, barrel, and slide. So first and foremost, get this barrel out, or the spring out rather. If you have any difficulty trying to compress it, what I always recommend is you actually turn the, the barrel sideways, the slide, and just force it down, and it'll pop right out for you, super easy. You'll notice that there is a uh, color-coded end. Interestingly enough, when I went through my certification training for this, uh, there is really no official answer as to what that's for. Some say it's for uh, wear. When the paint goes away, it's time to replace the spring, but Smith & Wesson officially, and, uh, they have really no, no two cents about that. So the only thing that we came up with is possibly something to do with manufacturing. But no rhyme or reason. But the one thing you'll notice here is a really high quality steel uh, guide rod in here. Very nice, not plastic. Uh, so a lot of durability and long, long lasting. They recommend about every uh, 6,000 rounds that uh, this be replaced. Okay, so now the barrel, pretty easy. All we're simply gonna do is lift up and the whole barrel will come out. And this of course has a four and a quarter inch barrel. Uh, very heavy stainless uh, slide here, steel slide, very, uh, very strong. Built for many, many rounds. There's, there is uh, M&Ps out there with well over 40,000 rounds. So, very durable gun. Barrel assembly, like you would imagine, nice and heavy duty. Uh, again, really nice finish on it, uh, nice coating. It, it, really, it really stands up to uh, a lot of wear and tear. This one, obviously, a little dirty. doesn't look like they cleaned it last. Uh, but that's uh, one of the nice things about these guns is they're very durable in uh, very harsh conditions. Now, one of the uh, key key uh, points to durability here for the Smith & Wesson M&P is that the actual steel is infused in with the plastic. It's not two separate components. There's really no way to remove the steel components from the actual frame. They're actually fused in there. So that gives it uh, m a much added rigidity. It's very strong and durable. And, of course, the less movements that happen when this gun is fired actually aids in its ability to be accurate. So that's one of the... Uh, features that make this gun so accurate as its actual construction method. And as you can see in here, uh, we just have basically a trigger bar and a spring that's moving back and forth that uh, interacts with interfaces with the uh, sear. So really, uh, these pistols, and, and again, across the board, most modern uh, polymer pistols, there's really not that much that can go wrong in there. You really have to uh, get a lot of junk inside there to really prevent it from working. So that's one of the things that makes these guns so reliable. All right, and so before we go to reassemble, one thing I want to tell you, there's a, you can actually see it, uh, there's a white uh, coating in there. It's actually a, a tube, uh, like a Teflon tube in there that the striker actually goes back and forth in. And one area in particular we don't ever want to get lubricant is down in there, because that of course will start to collect debris uh, from the oil and lubricant and cause you to have light primer strikes. So never lubricate that area. All right, so reassembly is super simple. All we're gonna do now is take our, our barrel and drop it in. One thing I always say, if you take the slide and shake it, if it stays in place, then it's locked in. If it's not all the way locked, you'll notice that barrel will move. So now we're good. Next step, of course, is put our spring in. Very easy. All we're gonna do here is take our thumb and compress it just a little bit, and that will go right into place. I usually hold it about eye level and look into it just to make sure that it's locked into that groove, but uh, this one is locked in perfectly, and again, there should be no movement at all. To reassemble, it's just as easy as disassembly. We're just going to take our frame, take our slide and line it up. A lot of mistakes come when you're trying to line this up. This has nothing to do with anything. This is just basically rails. The actual slide interface is here in these tabs, so this is where they're actually going to line up for you. Okay, and then all we're going to have to do now is put this to the rear. Oops. Lock it back with our thumb. And now we can go ahead and put our, our takedown lever back up as you heard it click. And let our slide go forward. 
Now, one thing to note, this gun right now will not fire because that uh, takedown bar inside here is in the downward position. So there's two things that you can do. You can simply just insert an empty magazine and that will automatically push the bar back up. Or you can, of course, lock it to the rear and use a tool, or your finger in this case, and flip it back up. I don't recommend putting anything inside there because if you put your finger in there like I just did, there is the possibility of the slide uh, causing you some real... Uh, Real hurt there, so I wouldn't do that. But there you go, so that's back in action. Now we're gonna do a quick safety check on it, our function chest rather, and then as we're gonna pull the trigger, the gun fires. Again, rack the slide, pull the trigger, keep the trigger pinned back. Rack it again, we're gonna listen for the reset, which we just heard, and the gun goes off. So that's so far so good. We don't have any mechanical safeties in this model, so there's nothing there to test. Uh, and this is functioned and ready to go. Now the one thing that you guys will notice about this particular gun, and although I don't own this particular model, I do really like this firearm. The trigger on these are excellent. So if you notice here, I'm going to actually show you on camera, the actual trigger movement and the reset. So here's the actual trigger. There is a little bit of slack, as you'll find with any polymer striker gun, but there's a very predictable wall right there. So there the shot breaks very crisp. The reset, very short. This is the standard trigger. This is not Apex uh, upgraded trigger. This is just the standard trigger. Very nice, very crisp, very short reset. Excellent triggers in these new models. So your standard fare is uh, in the box. You get your lock, and you can add it to your drawer of locks, and of course your owner's manual. But other than that, you get the plastic box, the two magazines, and the three back straps. Uh, the one nice thing about the MMPs, because it's so popular right now, is that accessories, if you want additional magazines or what have you, or you want to change sights, holsters, whatever the case is, there's a, a, a large variety of different products available for that particular pistol. Alrighty guys, hope you enjoyed the review on the Smith & Wesson M9 pistol. If you have any questions, feel free to ask. If you like what you see, go ahead and subscribe. And as always, it's always better to be judged by 12 than carried by 6.